Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead, and guys, they have arrived. Our potatoes from Hall's Tool. Now we ordered every variety they had. I'm going to read them off to you here, because here's the packaging list. We got the Yukon Gold Potato. We got the Norland, Red Norland Potato. French Fingerling Potato. Adirondack Blue Potato. Austrian Crescent Potato. German Butterball Potato. Uh, Kennebec white potato and the all blue potato. Now guys, these are the uh, eight varieties I told you about. We planted our own variety here at Deep South that we've been saving from year to year. Plus we put the white Russian fingerlings out. So 10 varieties of potatoes. Look beside me here. They come in these really cool bags. Burlap bags, 10 pounds each. Got the name tags on them. It's time for me to be cutting them up and getting them ready to go in the ground. And I'm going to tell you, I just cut up one of these blue ones here. That thing is the most beautiful color blue you've ever seen. We're going to go ahead and start cutting these things up and get them ready to go in the ground. We're running about three weeks behind here at Deep South Homestead, so we're hoping we can make up some time. we got a lot of rain coming. we got to pray that we can get these in the ground before the weather gets too bad. So, guys, follow us. Subscribe to us, whatever you got to do to keep up with how these potatoes grow, because we're going to keep them each individually separate, and we're going to keep tabs on them, and we're going to see how each one of them produce at the end of the season, so we know what does best here in Zone 8B at Deep South Homestead. So, follow us along, guys. Okay, guys, I'm going to take and give you a little demonstration here of how I cut my, uh, my potatoes up, and let you kind of get a get a first-hand view of it. Now what I like to do is I like to look for, I want at least three eyes on each piece I cut. It can be more, but I prefer three eyes. Now a lot of people will just take this thing and just quarter it. To me that's a waste because really all you got to have is a small piece of potato with three eyes on it and you can get a plant from it. So I'm trying to get as many plants from as few of potatoes as I can get. Now one like this one right here, I'm probably just going to go ahead and cut the whole end off of it, like that right there. Now there is actually one, two, three, four, five, six eyes on that, which is perfectly fine. I don't have a problem with that. But when you get on the sides now, you see you got like one here, one here, one way over here. You got one over here. It's, it's then that you have to cut your potato in a way in which not to... To, to lose a lot of your eyes. Now, one like this one here, because there's so few eyes on the end, I was only able to get two eyes on this big, huge chunk of potato. I'm okay with it because it's a big piece of potato. Rather than leave one eye on a smaller piece, I went ahead and chose two eyes. I prefer three, but even this big piece here, which is the other half of the potato, there's only like one, two, three. Now, I'm not going to cut it and try to make two out of it. I'm just going. I'm just going to leave it with just the three eyes on it. It's a big chunk of potato, and it'll do just fine. Okay, here we got one, two, three, four, five eyes on that. Now, what we're going to do, and the reason we're doing this, is we're trying to cut them and let them dry. Now, it will take. If you just let this sit and let the air do their do its work and the heat. It'll take about three to four days for this to cure out and do and heal over really good so that the sugar's in it. Turn to starch and the starches actually seal that over. But if you're in a hurry, you can actually use powdered sulfur. You can take that and put it on it. Or you can use coconut koi, uh, powdered coconut koi and put on it with sulfur. And it'll dry it up really fast and you can go ahead and plant them right away. But now we're probably just going to wait a few days. Um, and let them cure a little bit before we actually put them in the ground.
All right, we're back out here at the Fingerling Garden. We've got the Russian whites planted, two rows of them from a week before. We now have our other seed potatoes in, and we have the French fingerlings in now. These are a red potato. Uh, they are a very nice potato. I've never actually eaten them, and that's uh, going to be one of those things. We're trying them out this year to see how the white Russians do. That's what we planted before, and they've done fantastic. The, the French fingerlings, we're going to be trying them out and see how they do. And guys, we're using the Hoss tool bucket again. It makes it so simple. Both hands are free. It's the, all the weights on my back and shoulders, which is good. So we're going to hit the garden now. We're planting up on top of the beds, just like we did in the first ones, because of all the rain we're having. We just don't want the potatoes down deep in the ground where they might rot. So we're putting up on top of beds. It may come back to bite me in the butt. I don't know. It may wash all the dirt away from them, and it is what it is. I've got to get them in the ground, and I've got to keep them out from being where it's wet. So we're going to continue on with planting the French fingerlings. I want to mention something also. Uh, the, the standard rule for fingerlings is to be 16 to 18 inches apart. The guys, I don't have a lot of room this year to plant because I've got like 100 pounds of potatoes I'm planting of different varieties. So I'm actually going to be putting them closer together than that, and it will be just what it is, because I don't have enough land room ready for potatoes this year. Today is Valentine's Day, so... We were fortunate. God blessed us. We missed a lot of the rain. We only got one inch of rain out of all this rain that's come through. We got a two-day window of opportunity to plant before the next rain comes in. We got bacon smoking on the hill. We're running everywhere we can. We got another shipment of material coming in today, guys. There's all kinds of things happening today, so we're like rats running around here. We're trying to get a lot done. Ended up with three rows of French fingerlings. Now we're fixing to take the Austrian crescent fingerling. It's a white potato. The French one is a red. The Russian is a white. So we're gonna we, we put the red between the two whites, so we'd definitely be able to distinguish between the two different types of potatoes. So the Austrian crescent is next. Okay, guys, we're completely through now with the fingerling garden. We have two of the white Russian, three rows of French fingerlings, two rows of the Austrian crescent. So that's a lot of fingerling potatoes for us. We're going to move on now to the front garden up here and we're gonna go do our, I think we're gonna call it our blue potato garden because we got blue potatoes. We got two varieties of them. Okay, we're up here in the front garden now. We're gonna call this our blue potato garden. 
So we're gonna plant the all blues. Now I'm not, I am not familiar with blue potatoes at all, so I can't tell you anything about them. We're gonna plant two varieties up here, and we're gonna see how both of them do. We're planting the all blue next to the road by the lemongrass. got the first row two rows of all blues planted we're going to do a Yukon gold in the middle and we're going to be planting the Adirondack blues two rows of them on the lower end and the reason I'm doing this white potatoes here have never really done very good so I would rather beings already know that I would rather not waste a lot of my ground you know on white potatoes but then again we may be fooled this year. Who knows? So we're just going to do one row of the Yukon Golds, two rows of the Adirondack Blues. All right, we're down at the other garden now, below our carrot beds here. We've got some long rows here. We're going to be planting. The first off is going to be the German Butterball from Hall's Tool. We've got 10 pounds of them. We've got them all cut up here. Let me get around and see if I can figure out how the sun can heat it there. There we go. That's what they look like. They're a smaller potato. So we're going to try to get them in the ground here right quick and get them covered up. And then we're going to get our next variety. Okay, we have our third row planted here. We got the top two, the German Butterballs. The next row, the third one, is the... Let's get the paper up here so we can see. It's the Red Norland. We got one row of them. We got a little bit left over here in the bucket. Not a lot. I think we're going to save them and see if we can, uh, maybe if we have another piece of a row somewhere, we'll put them in that. But it's not enough for a whole another long row. So we're going to get these covered up and we're going to hit the next variety. We now have the fourth row planted down through here. As you can see, we got them spaced about every 10, 12 inches apart here, all the way down that long row. This variety is the Kennebec White, row number four. We got two more little tiny rows down at the other end. We got a few potatoes left over from some different varieties, so we probably throw them down there and not worry about what they end up being. We may choose one of the varieties we like the most and put them down there. We'll just have to wait and see, but this will probably conclude our potato planting at this point. So hang with us, guys. Watch us, see what goes on, see how the potatoes do. We're here to see which potatoes produce the most per row. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.